Have you ever calculated the percentage of tips to total pay that you make for the various gig economy apps? Well, stick around and I'll share my percentages and more importantly, I'm gonna tell you why this matters. Hello everyone, my name is Russ, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. I make videos to help drivers like you earn more money in tips and overall pay, and I try to give you tips on how to do better in your ratings. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so, and that way you'll know when I come out with new content. Today's topic, you know, it's kind of dreary, overcast, foggy outside. And today's topic could be a little dreary as well when you see the percentages of tips that you make compared to your total pay. Are you curious to find out the results? Well, here they are on the screen. And I'm gonna be sharing a lot of percentages and caveats talking about Prop 22 or no Prop 22. So I don't want you to get confused. I live here in California and they pass the law where if you don't meet certain minimums, the company will pay you extra money. And the reason that I'm calling this out is because this isn't across the nation. And so your results are gonna vary based on your market. But I feel it's fair to show the percentages uh, with and without Prop 22 so you can see the difference in your percentages. On your screen, you're gonna see I already have them in priority order. Where I make my most percentage of tips is Instacart, then Uber Eats, and then Grubhub. And that was my gut feel for Grubhub. It just seemed like customers weren't tipping as much, and I only have one month worth of data, so I'll know more as time goes on. But I think with the overall trend, you know, Grubhub, I have one month of data. Instacart, I have seven months running from May until now. And yeah, the month's not over. Uber Eats, I have five months of data. That's July till now. So that's enough information to try to make an assessment. And I'm just looking here. Looks like I have an Instacart order, 1896, six units, five miles. Hmm. Alcohol. You know what? I'm going to take this and I'll be right back. <sighs> That hurt. All right, welcome back. That order went well. It was 40 minutes, $19, six miles, but with the few miles I had to drive back, uh, it's been slow this morning, so I'm glad I took it. Anyway, that brings up a good point about tips. So on the screen, you're gonna see a chart. In ranking order, I make most of my tips off of Instacart. So I make 54% of my income comes from tips. And then if you account for Prop 22, that drops the percentage to 44%, which makes sense, right? You're adding money to my pay, so then the percentage of tips is gonna be lower. Next is Uber Eats. I make 39% of my income comes from tips. And then if you account for Prop 22, that drops to 36%. And then as I suspected using gut feel, it seems like people don't tip as well on Grubhub and my overall percentage is 29%. And that's the same for both because I only made $1.52 in Prop 22 pay. So what do you think of that? In the previous chart, you saw the breakdown of the gig apps and the percentages that I make in tips on each of those. So now let's look at the total income. And again, I'm in California, so Prop 22 only applies to me, but unless you're in California too. But let's go ahead and look at the total pay compared to Prop 22. That percentage comes out to 17%. So 17% of my money comes from Prop 22, excluding tips. Now let's bring in the total pay, not Prop 22, but including tips. And that brings my earnings, 41% of what I make comes from tips. So 41%. When you add in, when you factor in the Prop 22 pay, that percentage naturally will drop and it drops to 38%. So what I would say is if you live outside of California, you should just use the gig app pay, which is all you can do because you don't get Prop 22 pay. What does this matter? Who cares? Why am I giving you all these percentages? 
think about it, right? All these gig economy apps are in growth mode. They're competing with each other. Where's the money coming from? Who is paying us? Is it the investors if they're public companies, publicly traded companies? Probably, right? Do you see in competition that they're going to say, let's pay the drivers more? Probably not. So why, why do we care? Because we're going to do deliveries and shopping as long as we can make money. As long as that money comes from somewhere. Right now, a lot of it comes from tips. And I would imagine this is the same case for you. So what does that say long term about this type of job? I would say you need to be flexible and have other opportunities out there to make money. So if whatever reason that you decide not to work, you know, say you've been unfairly deactivated, say customers quit tipping, you know, anything can happen, but are you still gonna be able to deliver if the gig economy company is just paying you what they pay you? Already, I would say no. Right now, I barely find it worth it to do what I'm doing with the customers tipping. And if those customer tips went down, it would just not make financial sense for me to continue. You know, you, you look at all the uh, DoorDash bashing, which rightly so, 250 orders, even Uber Eats when they have $3 orders. If you do those all day, you're gonna lose money because we also have expenses and that's wear and tear on your car. For now, I'm enjoying it while it lasts. I don't count on it for the future, but I am involved in many of the gig economy apps and I'll keep trying the different ones and ideally, you know, bad things aren't gonna happen to all of them, so just go with the flow. Wherever the money is, that's where I'm gonna go. And you should think about that for yourself. Don't just stick with one app, unless you're making a lot of money with it, then I understand, but sign up for the others so that your income can come from a variety of sources. And then if something happens, you're not um, in trouble. And keep in mind, I do this part-time I would like to earn income outside of my main job, but again, it comes down to who's gonna hire me for one day or two days or you know a morning shift. Nobody, right? They want you at least for 20 hours a week. So I can't commit to that. So the gig economy apps are how I fill that void in trying to make some extra income. And that's just my story. If you do it full time, I would imagine um, you have a lot more insight to share and that is interesting as well. As I deliver more for Grubhub, I anticipate I'll still, I'll still make great money with them. I just do notice that customers don't tip as much. And that's probably because Grubhub is funding the difference. Otherwise, I wouldn't take the delivery. Just like I wouldn't do a DoorDash or Uber Eats delivery for $2.50 or $3. I will be going in the hole if I take those types of orders. What is your experience so far? For those who have already looked into your earnings, what do you think about this idea about the percentage coming from tips? And more importantly, what are your plans for the future? Do you find this information helpful that it makes you think, are you vulnerable? Is this really a good long-term solution for you doing gig work? I do appreciate your attention and I hope that you found this video helpful. Maybe it'll make you think, go back and look and see what percentage of your income comes from tips on these gig economy apps. Does that change your outlook on which apps to deliver for or which apps to do? You know, there are many other apps out there and some take advantage of different skills. These happen to be for us driving things around or shopping. But what about TaskRabbit? where you put furniture together or other manual labor tasks like uh, clearing snow? Or what about Rover dealing with pets? So there's many, many other apps out there. What is your view long-term of the gig economy? Do you see it thriving? Or do you see it as some stiff competition that companies will get us to work for pennies on the dollar and they just burn through people as they uh, try to get their business to grow? What are your thoughts on all this? And what advice do you have for each other? All right, stay safe. And right here, you know, it's a beautiful day in Southern California. So I'm going to keep doing some deliveries and make some money. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.